a remarkable display on the floor of Congress. Some Democrats, led by friends of the program, Connecticut Congressman Jim Himes, they walked out during a moment of silence for Orlando, that to protest inaction on the subject of gun violence. After that, they shouted down Paul Ryan and chanted, where's the bill, to the speaker. Take a listen. They telegraphed this, Andrew. Um, they said that uh, this was something that uh, they had had enough. They thought moments of silence were masking for the inaction, as I said before, for people who are asking, where's the bill? Explain what he was referencing. Well, they're looking for a bill that would you know, the terror, I think it's the terror no-fly list or the terror watch list bill uh, that the Senate was dealing with in December and it got voted down. Their basic argument is, look, we can have all these moments of silence for all these mass shootings whenever they happen, or we could actually debate this bill and, and uh, talk about the issue to a certain degree. And also uh, the representative from South Carolina whose district uh, had that tragic shooting at the church, uh, James Clyburn, he also uh, has some bills that he wants also relating to the gun violence thing. How do you think this plays, um, the optics of it? Um, the idea, to me, John Carl, we'll get into the assault weapons ban, all that in a minute, but the broader issue of doing something about this that everyone I spoke to on Sunday was, it's terrible, let's grieve for them, move on, because if Newtown doesn't change anything, why will this? Um, there seems to be a resignation in the American public. I think it's sad, but I definitely think it's there. Well, and I think a part of that resignation is the fact that, I mean, gun control is among, if not the most political issue in the United States. And it has proven, whether you're for it or against it, to be a political loser most of the time for those who espouse it. And no one wants to tackle it because it is a tough issue, but also because people who are passionate about gun rights turn out to vote. And those that want more gun control just don't in equal numbers. I mean, that's a fact. That's the tail of the tape uh, for this. You will not find a moderate Democrat in a swing district embracing gun control. Now, maybe something, maybe this event will be the one that, that turns the tide. I don't happen to think that it, that it will. I mean, it really does come down to politics. And I think that, A, furthers people's disgust. But, B, if you are disgusted and if you are in favor of more gun control, then organize and vote. That's your, that's your solution. And that, we've had elections in this country about the economy. We've had elections in this country about war. We've had elections in this country about health care. Why can't we have one about gun control? You know, Dom, I, I already can guess what you're going to say, or will it change anything what happened today? The answer is no. Okay, I, and I know that, and the optics of it, I guess, and, and, and I like Jim, uh, Congressman Himes, who was one of the people who led the, the walkout, if you will, and the shout down. But while in one voice you say it's theater, it at least is trying to bring some attention to the issue. Uh, haven't you been shocked that nothing really, even the theater, even the conversations, even the <coughs> speeches, it doesn't change? I haven't been shocked at all. It comes down to, and we say this night after night, partisan politics. One point that I agree with, those in the inner cities, it, you laid it out there and you're right. If you feel this strongly about it, politicians, rep that politicians respect numbers, period. If, if, a, if a sitting congressman sees that if I go against gun control on this issue, my career is over. Guess what's going to happen? They're going to vote for gun control. If they see that the more stronger opponent, if they, it, it would be the NRA, then they're going to go, and right now that's the case, then they're going to continue to go along with the NRA. It really is, and I agree, it really isn't a Democrat or Republican label. It's about the will of the American people. Well, there is a more narrow cast debate that um, was will be relitigated, I think, after what we saw in Orlando, and that is assault weapons. Uh, the president today said, it's time to bring back the assault weapons ban. Originally, it was signed by President Clinton in 94. In fact, uh, Chris Shays, uh, who you see often on this program, he was the Republican who co-authored uh, the bill that became law. Uh, but though it passed in 94, it sunsetted 
10 years later in 2004. Take a listen to the president today regarding the assault weapons ban. There are common sense steps that could reduce gun violence and could reduce the lethality of somebody who intends to do other people harm. Reinstate the assault weapons ban. Make it harder for terrorists to use these weapons to kill us. Otherwise, these kinds of events are going to keep on happening. Now, the Orlando shooter, he used a spinoff of the AR-15, which is a military-style rifle. The AR-15, or something just like it, was used in several recent mass shootings, including the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, the Aurora, Colorado movie theater, San Bernardino, and many other incidents like that. Now, these guns, they're used to kill a maximum amount of people in the least amount of time. Jerry... Listen, um, there's a lot of things, <clears throat> if you are a supporter of changing the way or the ease at which people can get certain kinds of guns that you can look back on and say strategically were mishandled in the aftermath of Newtown. Um, and I've been vocal that I think the president deserves a decent amount of the blame for, for how he handled it or didn't handle it until after the fact. That said, they try to get a lot of things done in there. We saw the background checks had uh, more than 90% of the American public believed in the idea of a universal background check, but they attached a bunch of other different things to a bill, and it became, whether you agree with it or not, too unwieldy in the end to get passed. If they focus only on the assault weapons ban, do you think Republicans are going to have trouble? Or do you think they say, we've been down this road before. In the end, we know what the math is. There's every red state, we're safe, and even in some purple ones, we're good too. Or do they say it's different because of Newtown, because of Orlando, because of the preponderance of it, and the argument, do you really need to have something that's meant for the battlefield to be sold to the general public? You know, it goes down to regional politics again. I mean, you t we, in, in urban centers and cities and, and uh, you know, uh, on the coast, people would ask that question, say, what do you need an assault weapon for? And the answer is you, you, you don't. But if you go, if you leave these urban centers, there's a Second Amendment issue, and the people, they, they, they believe it's their right to have that. And they will also say that um, banning this isn't going to change anything. This guy could have gone in with a bomb. He could have done this or that. Um, so the, the problem with this discussion is you need about 50 remedies, maybe more, and, and we can't seem to get past go with one of them. But to me, the one thing I'd say, Jerry, is this guy legally bought this. He right. wasn't legally allowed to buy certain body armor that they won't even sell our military, but he was legally allowed to buy this. Now, we'll figure out who should or shouldn't be. But we can't even agree, if you're in a terror watch list, That's right. that you should be banned. I mean, if somebody landed from another planet and heard this conversation, this would be insane. Now, we can debate what the Second Amendment was intended or not. I'm not going to waste everybody's time with that. But if you're in a terror watch list, the same guys screaming that the president's in league with the enemy are still preserving the right for somebody on a watch list to own an AR-15. That would seem to be a layup. I mean, I agree. You, you can sort of check that off. He's on a watch list. He was in uh, the FBI talked to him twice under two investigations, and yet he still passed a background check. Um, I guess the question is, how thorough are our background checks if this guy can get a gun? I mean, if he had no criminal record, but he was investigated. I mean, it just it defies common sense. But again, you know, if you, uh, I read a piece today um, in uh, the Philadelphia newspaper where a columnist went in and bought a rifle in 15 minutes. The, the, the check was, it was, it was quick. I mean, I would think that background checks would have to be more thorough. Um, you know, it would take a few weeks or something like that. And every state would have to be participatory, and otherwise it's not really worth the paper it's written on. But even that, Giancarlo, if you went to make a terror watch list, you know, that you're banned if you're on it, right? Or if you've ever been convicted of any domestic violence or if you've been treated for mental illness or whatever, is there political ramifications for a Republican to sign on just to that? Well, again, I mean, you really have to get into the weeds here to, to adjudicate this argument. And but isn't not, that the I problem? Not, I'm, that we well, try but, and find, but, isn't but the, listen, the perfect, the enemy of the good? We that we're trying about to solve the everything The government once. loves talking about lists. Uh, you know, and background checks. I mean, we apparently we, we background checked the, uh, the 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 husband and wife in California, and upon further review, found all this social media footprint that would have uh, given some indication that they were at least prone to doing what they ended up doing. 
So I think, and I, I will wear the hat of someone who, who is a, a gun rights supporter um, and say, and I'm not, but I, I will, for the purposes of this argument, and say, you know, so if you're on a watch list, you are denied a constitutional right. That is how the pro-gun community views this. You know, if you commit a crime, if you are an abuser, okay, then you, you, you pay the price and your rights are denied. But if you're on a watch list, then something that is enshrined in our Constitution is denied to you. That is the argument that a gun rights supporter would make. Let me make a different argument, which is that our current state of gun policy in the United States is aiding and abetting our enemies, the terrorists who want to kill us. ISIL spokespeople have said in their calls to lone wolf uh, people in the, in the United States and across the West, look at the laws about guns and weaponry in the United States. What are you waiting for? It's, it's common knowledge among these people that it, this is the easiest country in the world to get a gun. And now we're starting to see those chickens come home to roost as we're starting to see more and more gun violence in the name of terror. So maybe instead of the Second Amendment debate, maybe instead of the, uh, the rights on who's on a watch list debate or, or the merits or lack thereof of, of you know, machine guns, maybe it's, hey, you say you want to do everything we can to stop ISIL. How about this? But how about what? How about we rethink our gun laws and maybe and make some sensible regulations to the Second Amendment and like, stop arming like, the people who are like trying what, to kill like us? What? Like what? I mean, this is where period, we get into like the... Like a waiting like, period to get an assault weapon. Like uh, a limit to a stock that you can have. Like, why do we need an AR-15? Um, you know, I, I, I know the difficulty. It's easy for a guy in a makeup in a suit at the end of a table no. to say this. It's harder to enact it. I'm only saying... We make this sometimes, I think, harder when we've already done it. We already had an assault weapons ban. It didn't solve all the problems. It did. It many didn't. would argue it didn't solve any problems. But it's, it seems to me that we have, a lot of people have very little problem curtailing some civil rights in the name of stopping terrorism. But this one amendment oh, can't argument. be touched. Right. Coming up next, the Donald taking uh, thin skin to a new level. He's unhappy with an article in the Washington Post, so... He revoked the Post's press credentials. Somebody from the paper is going to join us to respond.